What is up amigos? Today we're looking at the effects of underbody smoothing and flow control devices. So in other videos we talked about the underbody a little bit, but we're gonna go through this in more detail in this video. So if you have a regular car, let's say the underbody we're looking at here, and we have the flow coming on here, so this is the underbody, we have a lot of things that are often exposed here. We might have a fuel tank and some running gear and some air coming in through the radiator and et cetera, and it comes out from the bottom. And we might even have a spare tire somewhere as well. All of these components and more mean that the underbody is very jagged, it's very rough. And what happens is the flow comes along, hits some of these things, and then it might separate, and then we get a high uh, pressure at the front, low pressure at the back. That increases the pressure drag, as well as some friction drag, just because the surface roughness of these things are often quite rough, and that increases the drag of the entire vehicle. So one way around this is we can cover these sections up. So we can put these plastic plates on that we often manufacture, especially for this purpose, to cover up a lot of these sections that we can cover up and make it smoother. So by making it smoother, we don't have these things jutting out into the flow, and that means we don't get this flow separation nearly as much and we don't get as much drag. But sometimes that's not possible because often we have, for example, the air that comes out from the cooling flow. We want that to still, ex to still escape. So if we have a plate covering this, that obviously stops that from happening and then we can't call the vehicle. But there are other things we can do as well. So for example, we can use something called spoilers. So depending on where on the underbody we're using a spoiler, we can call them different things. So if we have a regular car at the front, let's say, this is the front of the car, and we have the flow coming in, and it might be situated a certain distance from the ground. And that means that as the flow comes in, it hits the front, and this is the stagnation point, for example. The stagnation point means that the flow is effectively divided into two parts now. The flow comes over the top here, and then the flow comes under the bottom. So depending on where the stagnation point is, it will determine on how much flow will go underneath and how much flow will go on top. So a way to, to change the stagnation point is to actually extend the car down a little bit. We call this a front spoiler. What this does, the stagnation point moves down a little bit, and that means that the flow that's coming in Come, still comes in and hits this point and then it gets redirected over the top and underneath but the amount of flow that now goes underneath is less because we don't have the stagnation point as high less of the fluid is directed down also having this spoiler here really reduces how much flow can come underneath the car as well what this does is it effectively isolates the underbody part from the oncoming flow and reduces how much flow hits this underbody part and then can reduce the drag through that way now we do get a drag penalty in terms of this setup because we obviously have a greater frontal area and the flow just coming in the front and hitting it. But because we can reduce how much flow hits the underbody, often we can reduce the entire drag of the car just through extending the bottom of this vehicle here, the front of it, that's the front spoiler. Another spoiler we can use is something called wheel spoilers. So in front of the wheel, again, we have these little flaps that come down and they redirect the flow. So instead of the flow coming directly on and hitting the wheel, it might get redirected a little bit out or inside, and then that can skip around the wheel so we don't have this flow again hitting the front of the wheel, this perpendicular surface, and it reduces the drag that way. Another type of spoiler we can use is just one called, that's called a upstream spoiler. This is a generic spoiler. So for example, if we have the fuel tank and we want to stop the flow hitting the fuel tank and separating, we might put a spoiler upstream and redirect the flow a little bit or if we have the spare tire, we can do the same thing, or wherever we have flow separation occurring and an increase in drag, we can put a spoiler often upstream of that and redirect the flow a little bit to reduce that from happening. That's called a general upstream spoiler. And with the underbody, in terms of smoothing, this is often giving us the best reduction in drag. So for example, if we were to use um, a completely rough underbody, so no covers at all, and then we put smoothing uh, covers on there, we can expect a drag reduction of about between 0.025 and 0.05. So in other words, 25 counts to 50 counts, which makes up like 10, 20% of a vehicle's drag. So that's a massive reduction just by covering the underbody. If we were to use these spoilers, often we'll get maybe for the front spoiler wheels and upstream, depending on where we're, what we're looking at, we might get between five counts and 15 counts, um, depending on the vehicle and what we're looking at. But covering the underbody is by far the usually the most effective way of reducing the drag. And this is mainly because of the reduced pressure drag.
If you don't know what to reduce pressure drag is or pressure drag in general, check out our Aero Fundamentals video on that, which I'll link in this card here. So that is the underbody of a car and how smoothing it affects the drag and different flow control devices. Let's quickly go through it again, just to recap. So we have the underbody of a car, the flow is coming in here, and we have all these different components on the underbody. They're often exposed. And that means that the flow comes in, hits them, and it's gonna separate, it's gonna increase the friction drag, pressure drag, and that's not good for the car. If we can cover these surfaces with flat plates, so they're smooth, that dramatically reduces the roughness effectively of the underbody. You don't have nearly as many of these objects protruding out into the flow. And that means that the flow is attached more and we can reduce the pressure drag and the total drag subsequently. The reductions we're looking at is around 25 counts to 50 counts. Alternatively, we can use spoilers. So spoilers are effectively just flat plates that redirect the flow a little bit to reduce how much the flow is hitting the bad sections. So for example, the front spoiler, we have the oncoming flow here. We reduce the uh, distance between the bottom of the, the ground to the bottom of the car effectively by lowering the front of the car with this front spoiler. That reduces where or lowers the stagnation point, which then reduces how much air goes underneath the car compared to over the top. It redirects the flow effectively more over the top. That means less flow is interacting with the underbody section. Alternatively, we can have wheel spoilers, so spoilers just ahead of the wheels to redirect the flow a little bit to make sure we're not hitting the wheel straight on. And finally, we have generic upstream spoilers. So wherever we have the troublesome aerial, we just put a upstream spoiler there and then we can redirect the flow a little bit and kind of skip over the really bad sections and redirect the flow. So that is the effects of underbody smoothing and flow control devices. If you like this video, make sure to like it. And if you want to see more like this, click the subscribe button. And we also just recently partnered with a really good company that puts on a nice course on automotive aerodynamics, uh, JKF. So you can find that link in the description to that course. It goes through a lot of race car aerodynamics in like very good detail. The reason why we wanted to partner with them for this course is because of how much detail they go into in their course. So they go through not only the practical application of different flow control devices and what happens in like F1 or motorsport, but they also go through the fundamentals of these uh, things. So for example, if like this, we've gone through the flow, how it comes in, the pressure drag, total drag, they go through things like that as well, and vortex dynamics. So I really like that course, and if you want to get better at automotive dynamics, check out that course in the link in the description. And I'll see you next video. Peace out, amigos.